Now, you deal with something known as reduction as well as formation, diversity formation. Would you exp just explain um, how that, what it is and how it works? So, so a reduction in genetic diversity is similar to what Kathy was talking about before when she mentioned a bottleneck. So um, it's this idea that you, know, you have an ancestral population and that because a subset of the ancestors survive or a subset of the ancestors move to a new area, the genetic diversity is reduced. So there's this bottleneck. Um, you can just literally think about the top of the bottle, right? Um, and, and it turns out that this happened in many populations, not just the Ashkenazi population, but when people move to new areas of the continent, um, their, their genetic diversity is reduced. So we also know that this occurred um, with Native Americans. So if you think back about the uh, relatively <laughs> Uh, recent history of Native Americans, which to me is about 15,000 years ago, um, a subset of individuals migrated across the Bering Strait and into North America and South America, um, but very, very few ancestors were actually um, involved in this process. So there was, a, there was a reduction in genetic diversity or a population bottleneck when they moved from Siberia into the Americas. And the estimates are that maybe um, the ancestors of first migration to the Americas was only 100 individuals, so a very, very One small population. Just 100 people. Just, you know, this is called yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the effective the population size. I'll try to not keep it that technical. Gotcha. But, yeah. Well, let's talk about um, a little bit more about reduction. Um, in dealing with the recent cover story of the New York Times mm. uh, here in the Americas. Now, for those who didn't see the article, scientists recently analyzed the DNA and the skull of a prehistoric teen girl. The skull was discovered in an underwater cave in Mexico. Uh, this tells us something about how America, the Americas were populated before the European colonies. But explain the science here. So the idea is that they're going to they're gonna take um, the skull from this individual who has been very well preserved, and they extract some small amount of DNA from it. And the DNA that you use to trace your genealogies, um, so, you, you know, your mother um, uh, gives you DNA, right? You have your mother's DNA. So that you can do the same sort of tracing just very, very far back in time. And this individual, if you look at, for example, their maternal DNA, you can actually trace it among other Native American populations and eventually even among Asian populations. You can sort of connect all these different lines, which allows you to understand where people have common ancestors. And the Native Americans, um, as this study, as an example of, have a common ancestor with populations in northern Asia. So it's very clear that their ancestors, or many of their ancestors, came from northern Asia and moved into the Americas and eventually were very successful and colonized the entire um, American continent. And the water helped preserve, and because we were talking earlier about there not being much DNA in hair strands, but this thousands of years old, how... Right, so in certain environments, particularly cold environments, the DNA can actually be well preserved. Um, there's some amazing studies where they've looked at mammoth bones um, that are preserved uh, basically in the permafrost, and you know they're 100,000 years old. I mean, you can get DNA out of Neanderthals now. It's it's really very incredible. 